Hello, everybody. This is your host, Chris Iacono, and you're listening to Season 5, Episode 2 of Atomic Rumpus. Don't forget, you can get access to premium, exclusive content on our Patreon. Visit us online at patreon.com backslash Atomic Rumpus. On with the show. And we are back, everybody. That's right. Season 5, Episode 2. Thanks for listening. I got nothing. I just took a 17-second pause to think of something funny, and nothing nothing came. My studio's a mess this morning. I feel completely uh, kaflumpled. I got boxes over here. I got equipment over here. I got the camera over here, bags over here. I tried to sell a bunch of stuff on eBay this month. I got eBay things all over the place. It's like old retro toys from the 80s everywhere. Do you realize that the 80s is almost 40 years ago? Wow. Yeah, that would be the shower thoughts. That's insane to me. But yeah, what a mess this place is. I got to clean it up. And I think, I don't know, does that happen to you guys sometimes mentally? You're like, oh, my space. I got to do something to my space. You got to just, you got to like move a, the cup a foot over. Or is that, do I have some weird OCD that I don't know about? Like the coffee cup must be here for me to record properly. It produces you guys ever move stuff around just to move it around? I don't mean like you're walking back and forth with like a lamp. That's weird. Although occasionally you got to take your lamp for a walk every now and then. Why not? No, like I like to rearrange stuff every few years. It used to be I would just move like once a year. I'd be like, I'm gone. Peace. I got to go move across town. And I would. I'd move like 10 blocks just to have a new space because I like new spaces. But I found a better way is to just rearrange. And you come in, you're like, oh my god, I got a brand new room in this house. Wow. I mean, it goes away after like a year, but you do it again. You move the bedroom, you move the uh, the office over to here. You got one big room, and you call it the closet. You got people walking in the house. No, 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 upstairs, near the tub. That's where we watch television. I really don't know. That's what I came up with. I had nothing, and then I had something. All right. Without further ado, everything you need to know in the news. <laughs> A new report from Wired Magazine is pointing to some potential pesticides in California cannabis. Uh Uh-oh, that's never good. Somebody's like, look out for the pesticides. You're like, oh, great. Oh, here we go. So a bunch of people, a bunch of investigators, a bunch of science people with those crazy uh, suits from Stranger Things were walking around and in, in studying cannabis and all the grows in California, and they found... A bunch of anticoagulant rodent side near illegal grows out in the hills and the woods and the mountains in California. So what happens is, you know, even though California just legalized it, I guess people, you know, obviously there's a huge black market still. Until it's, uh, you know, until they legalize it federally, you're going to have people growing it in the in the mountains in the woods that's what's happening people are growing it they're using this rodent side that's getting into everything it's going into the groundwater it's killing rats uh owls are eating the rats and the owls are getting all sick that's crazy because you know you don't want to psycho owl that owls are like apex predators if owls get angry hey okay dude california that's it you can't even hike anymore i'd hate to not be able to hike i love hiking we're going to talk about hiking on the show now, this isn't meant to be alarmist or scary, but if you're still getting weed from uh, some dude who gets it from some dude, you got to be careful. A lot of the stuff in the rest of the country, a lot of it comes out of California because it's easy to grow in the middle of nowhere. It's so big. They got hills. It's uh, like a wine country. A cannabis is like a green wine. It's so people, they go to the woods with the camel and they make, it the, they make it the green wine. That's what they do. And here's what these investigators had to say. Uh, Quote, we have data clearly demonstrating the plant material is contaminated 
not just with one or two, but a plethora of different types of pesticides that should not be used on any consumable product. And we find it on levels that are potentially a threat to humans as well. So look, like I said, this is this is why people like me go organic, okay? You sit there, you go, oh, he's a stupid organic guy, he spends $2 for peppers. Eh, you know what? I ain't got no rodent side in my peppers or my herbs. So, uh, remember that the next time you're like, who's oh, the organic? Yeah, 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 because when you don't buy organic, when you buy from the douchebag driving around a Honda Civic with uh, sp- speakers and rims, he sells you a 20 bag, you know, you don't, you don't know where that, you don't care where that came from. He's probably, yeah, there's all types of yeah, sh- schmutz all over that. Hey, I don't want on that. I want organic. So let this, uh, you know, take this as a, as a, as a potential uh, thing you should just keep your eye on. Look, you're going to smoke some weed, smoke some weed, but it, it, natural, natural. You know, natural garden, natural people. It's got to be like a green packaging, obviously. Now, California's got its own issues with dealing with this because uh, for years, I've said this about California, the taxes are ridiculous out there, and they're, they're still ridiculous when it comes to weed. The taxes on on recreational cannabis in California are going to be something like 40 or 50%. That is outrageous. That's going to make it more expensive than it is right now. Uh, people are not going to go to the dispensaries to do it. California's got, you guys got to fix that. You got to, please, seriously, you got to stop voting for all this, like more libraries and more uh, roads and more this and more that. Hey, I know libraries are nice, roads are nice, but uh, don't, you know, every time you vote for one of these museums, they raise the prices on everything. Colorado does an amazing job of making sure all of the cannabis in all of the dispensaries is pesticide free. And the taxes out here, even on the the recreational, it's like six or seven percent. It's reasonable. Look, I wish it was zero, but it ain't fifty. Boom, not on fifty percent. Uh, California, get you get you get number California politicians, which crazy tax, get it together. California growers, with your road inside, uh, cut it out. You, you you need to maybe consider going organic. I think that would be nice. And people buying the, with the weed, look, go get a medical card. Go get a medical card. You're going to save money, and uh, you can get a medical card and get uh, all the cannabis you need. So I highly suggest you get your stuff from a from a, a medical-grade uh, dispensary and ask them. Just say, hey, look, I want to make sure there's no pesticides used in any of this stuff, right? And they go, oh. If they go like that, go, okay, i see you later, and go to another dispensary. If they go, never. If the guy goes makes like a fish poo face, it makes like a poo face at you, he goes, oh, never. We never put the pesticides. If he says it like that, yay, that's a place that needs your business. In the studio, once again, in the rumpus room. Yay! As always, Here we've we always are. been in the rumpus room. I know I have. Never not in the rumpus room. Sounds like a fun room. I'm rumpusing. I know. I've never rumpused harder. Yeah. Than I'm rumpusing right now. For the listeners, describe uh, what the rumpusing is that you're doing. Oh, right dude, now. it's engaging in the activity of rumpus, <laughs> which is what I am. Doing. All right. A pure, <laughs> pure rumpus. It's pure, like- yep. It's like, like the, the very ra- essence of radio the rump. equivalent of reaching nirvana is reaching pure rumpus. Correct. Yep. Right. You have to meditate like like monks sit on mountains for for mm-hmm. years to try to reach that state of rumpus, and we've done it in an afternoon. And it's weird. It's like a ball of glowing green light that's undulating. It seems to be having a great time without anybody else. And disco music. <laughs> yep. There's emanating definitely disco music from the core of the rumpus. Correct. Yeah. My heart is turned into a disco ball. <laughs> no, yes. no wonder you're holding ice. I am because I'm so hot. That's right. From all the rumpusing that I'm doing. <laughs> It, it, that's the little known fact about rumpusing. It oh. increases your body temperature. So yeah. this is just for safety. I cannot even begin to describe to you how much for granted Nadine and I took ice this weekend. <laughs> Speaking of ice, you have ice. I have. We are, we are sitting here with ice. Ice is a wonderful thing. Oh, it is amazing. It is a wonderful thing. You guys didn't have ice. No, we had no ice. We had no cell phones. We had no service. We had... We just had our backpacks and our wits and our food and so, our water. So you were either victims of Hurricane Irma or you voluntarily <laughs> lost yourself out in the wilderness. Yeah, we went on our big old hiking trip. 
He we did. did. Yeah. Like, check it off the bucket list. Uh-huh. I have now backpacked. Backpacked. You guys do that a lot, though. Like, this was our do. first backpacking. We've done a lot of hiking. Right, and a lot right, of whoa. camping what and the, a lot of other stuff. you got to break down. What's the difference? Where's the line between hiking, camping, and backpacking? Hmm. So is backpacking Ooh, just hiking good... but carrying a backpack? Maybe that should be our questionable answer. It, it could be. It could be. That's a good... Well, this sounds like the questionnaire you have to take like when you enter the, the, you know, the Australian Outback. You're like, <laughs> all right, what's the difference between hiking, backpacking, and camping? Yeah. What's the airspeed <laughs> velocity of the modern kangaroo? Yeah. <laughs> While backpacking. <laughs> How no, many the kangaroo wallabies? is wearing an osprey. <laughs> How many wallabies in a dingo? <laughs> So no no we yeah, we go a lot we hike every other weekend we go on a big old we just hiked a fourteener like four weeks ago before that we went camping for three days and last weekend we just went on a three day backpacking trip so I so don't, what's the difference is that each one has a different rate of people dying on them so how many died on yours nobody what we thought two people <laughs> would or three people would there was some people that were not having fun. <laughs> So is there is there is there such thing as doing too much of this? It seems like you're frequently uh, engaging in an outdoor activity of some sort. I don't think so. I think so. No, don't project your amount of ass sitting onto our hiking movement hey, abilities. I climbed a fourteen. Something. I climbed a fourteen. When, when you were fourteen? No. <laughs> I have fourteen steps in my house, so I walked all the way up there because oh. I because I needed to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> No, we are not doing this like freaks. Yes, you are. We go enough. It seems like it's too much for some people. No, no, no. It's not. It. The big difference between the three is uh, camping is uh, you bring a car full of gear. Okay, you do car camping. You have gear, you fill up your car with as much gear as you can: tents, stoves, fire starters. Axes, chainsaws, tarps, tents, the whole nine. Which was totally new to me coming to Colorado. Exactly. First time Nadine did it. I took a camp in two years ago. Uh, oh, a year and a half ago. Uh, we went camping. So yeah, then you, you drive to a spot where you're allowed to camp. You find a fire pit. You park your car. And you walk ugh, no more than like 30 or 40 feet to your campsite. It's right there. You could run to your car. You could even sleep in your car if you want. Some people do. And you, you make a camp, but you stay there for two or three days. So it's the amount of gear is what determines what the activity is referred kind to as. Of. And then the the amount of what's the what's the phrase what's the adjective for n- being a nomad? The amount of nomadicity, nomadic, nomadic, no, nomadic, nomadening, nomadic. <laughs> I know it makes me really nomad. Nomad. Nomadicness, yes. maybe. No, so no if you madicy. stay in your camp, if you don't move your house, you camp it. Okay, you can camp for one night, you but if you move your house. Your campsite, then to another you're campsite. Backpacking, even if you don't have backpacks. No. What, what if I just? What if I? That's didn't, essential. What if I was camped like on an angle and I didn't like that angle and I moved mine ten feet to the right to a different angle? Now you're just having OCD in the woods. Oh yeah, that's different. That, that happens <laughs> no matter where I go. So does that change it from backpacking to, to hiking? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Camping? Like moving the campsite. Yeah, hiking is no camping whatsoever. Hiking is just go on a hike. You come back the same day. You leave in the morning, you go, all right, we're going to go to here, and then we're going to see the lake, eat lunch, and then come back. Right. That's a hike. Two type of hikes. So There's can you not- in and out and a loop. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the in and out hike, You're that's my favorite. <laughs> and I like the- That hike is over too quickly for my taste, but- <laughs> It's a quickie. It's a quickie hike. So can you camp and hike that's, at the same time? Can that you, is backpacking, my friend. Is that called... Well, I can't say that. No, not. it's not. It's <laughs> no, not that's the backpacking. That. So for backpacking, we packed up these giant packs. Like, my pack started out at 45 pounds. You packed up these packs and you put them on your Our backs. backs. On your backs. Yes. Yeah, we went for three days. So we went right. two nights and three days of hiking. So you get you drive to... Two nights and three days of hiking, but then you also backpacked. Yes. And then you camped during those nights. Yeah, no, the, so you, the hiking became backpacking because we were carrying right. bigger bags. Which and, then turned into camping. Yes. So yes. you did all three exactly. simultaneously. That's, exactly. That's so why couldn't we just think means. of no, one all two. Like two. ubiquitous term for the whole thing? The two become the three. This is the good. hiking and the camping, or what backpacking can hiking plus camping <laughs> equals backpacking. Yes. So there is no third, it's just the two. So you can't just. You can't just backpack. Well, there's no such thing as just backpacking. Yes, just backpack. Yeah. That's what we did. We just we backpacked. But you still hiked and camped. Like the conglomeration Back- of hiking and camping equals backpacking. Backpacking is made of yeah, and it gets even right. more confusing. Backpacking is made of ha- hiking and camping. However, if you do some crazy sh- stuff, okay, like let's say you hunted too. Oh no. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no. yeah. Slow okay. down. Let's say you hunted, or let's say you gathered, or 
Let's say you did something like uh, like squirrel suit dived or rock climbed. Now, now you've adventured. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So when you add the third to the camping and the hiking, and then, it's already backpacking. Then it's adventure. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so camping... Plus hiking equals backpacking. Okay, so it's backpacking plus backpacking plus anything extreme that could cost you your life or is dangerous equals adventuring. Huh. So now, now I think I get it. I, so you can I, backpacking or camping is the lowest increment. Yes, camp, right. back, camping is the easiest. It's the easiest, so and it's still uncomfortable as hell because you're dirty and you're making you cooking food out of a cooler for two days, well, three de- days. Depends on who you go. I've gone camping with people that bring like air mattresses and, and memory foam and have a little portable air conditioners and yeah. generators so they well, can be on their phones. If they're in a tent, they're camping. If they're in an RV, they're RVing. That's different. That's a thing? You can RV? You can RV. You're not really camping. It's because you're in like a mobile home. You're in a, ho- you're in a drivable you're in a house. Spot. No, then, then you're in Alabama. Sure. <laughs> That's what that is. You're in an RV and you're sleeping next to somebody who's probably related to you in an inappropriate manner. Yeah. That's alabama Sure. alabama We didn't go alabama We went hiking. We alabama. hiked 14 miles and, and backpacked two nights. So, well, yeah, we backpacked 14 miles over three days. Huh. Did you adventure also? Mm. Did you do anything that might cost you your life? We, Some, put, you tried... we put out a forest, forest fire. fire. That we came you put upon. out a force. That's an. Adv- How is that not an adventure? We did adventure. It did. That's yeah. an adventure. Well, I wanted to explain what adventuring was before we sprung on before you. That you said that you engaged. Right. In. We put out a forest right. fire, huh? So yeah. you're like you're like Smokey the Bear. It's right, dude. <laughs> only, only you can prevent those fires. I'm just Smokey in general, <laughs> and I'm kind of hairy. <laughs> you, yeah, no, yeah. you definitely so, would be a bear, or at least a chipmunk. You could be Smokey the chipmunk. Smokey the chipmunk or a hedgehog. He doesn't sound as dangerous. As no, a bear. but he sounds safe. The oh, thing about no. Smokey the bear is that if you leave your fire going, Smokey the bear will tear your face off because he's a bear. Right. You don't wrong a bear. Right. But a, but a chipmunk. I mean, you can feed it. Smokey Screw the a chipmunk. chipmunk. Yeah. Nobody's gonna respect a chipmunk, bro. No, I but do. you would do it. You would do it just out of kindness. I like, try to. Like, oh, you're that's so cute. That's why I wouldn't let you feed the chipmunk. Anytime <laughs> I see a chipmunk in the forest, I try to feed him pot candy. <laughs> just, to, I, I'm hoping. Here's what. Here's my theory. I'm hoping if I give enough chipmunks a little bit of THC and weed candy, they will maybe run off to their colonies and have some type of advancement in culture. You in their are, economies and further that chipmunk. You know, you are species. bear grillizing. Bear grillizing. <laughs> no, the audience right now. I think you, there's a flaw in that plan. There. When have you ever introduced <laughs> THC to a situation and made it advance further? <coughs> it's more the lack of THC that creates innovation to to make THC. You never, Once never, you have the THC. Then I mean you're basically creating s- communities of, of squirrels and chipmunks. Here's what I'm hoping. Who I'm sit hoping and and uh-uh. and watch TV. I give one squirrel or one chipmunk like a little little sesame seed or a little sunflower seed that's got some of the the, the you know the cannabis stuff on it. The the squirrel goes back. It's like blasted out of its mind. It goes back to its its house. It starts taking the nuts and arranging them in this weird pattern because it thinks of something cool. And then maybe it starts playing them. What had the other chipmunks come up and like what is Joe doing? And Joe is just freaking out, having his own, doing his own thing, and it just makes him think for a second. Wow, maybe that's, maybe that's a way to live life. And Joe never forgets that day when he couldn't stop arranging his nuts, and everything was magical to him. So it, maybe so it could, it could somehow propel the evolution of that little group of chipmunks into he, the future. He does forget. He forgets as he's doing it ah. that he's doing it, and then he sits and has like an hour long conversation about whether he's really a squirrel or whether he's really a chipmunk. I think he'll be all right. I think I feel. For I've that. yet to do this. Nadine oh, stops gosh. me every time. I, I get the nut out. And she's like, "No, <laughs> you are not allowed to." Ah, oh, come on. She's no. She's rescuing chipmunk <laughs> culture. Is. I feel like that's a bad idea. You are out bear grillising the whole situation. It makes your brain do things you don't want it to do. It helped your uncle Joe quit smoking. It was the cheapest show in the casino. Is it performance art filled with cheesy mustached men in watches? Or a covert government operation to control your mind? On this week's Deluminati... Hypnosis! Hey, 
Hey, it's the, the Illuminati bit segment thing where we confuse you about conspiracies. We find something that might be a conspiracy and then we uh, we maybe uh, we talk about it for a little bit. And hopefully you know a little less uh, coming out than you did going in. If you have opinions about it, email them. Loosely. We loosely, loosely. discuss it. Loosely well, discuss it. And it, it. works because I don't know what we're doing. Exactly. But to be <laughs> fair, you rarely know what we're doing. To be fair... All of us rarely know what we're doing. I would go with that one, yes, <laughs> particularly. <laughs> you seem very excited about hip 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 hypnosis. Well, it is my favorite kind of gnosis. It is my favorite kind of it's gnosis. It's cooler than most gnosis. <laughs> it is the coolest gnosis. I used to think hypnosis was for the birds. You thought birds did hypnosis? Yeah, that's right. No, for the birds. It's for the birds. You know, it's for uh, like, like somebody else. Their nests, like, maybe. I don't know. It's just a phrase birds. I've always wanted to use. <laughs> 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 I try. I tried to get away with it. I, I slipped it in. It didn't work. We're crossing off bucket work. list items here. Yeah, on on the show for the birds. I tried, and I couldn't. I didn't slide it in. Slide enough. Well, you did. It was just way too obvious yeah. that you were no, forcing it in there. What's for the birds is how hypnosis is marketed. Sure. Actual hypnosis, I love. I've got books on the shelf that say how to hypnotize yourself and others. I've got other books on other types of <laughs> hypnosis that aren't even called hypnosis. It's like secret hypnosis that therapists have been using and pickup artists and Tony Robbins's and the government's. So it is all that too. It's like mainstream gnosis. It's yes. no longer hip gnosis. It's no longer hip. When the government's doing it, it's not hip anymore. Not yes, anymore. When, yeah, that, that kills the gnosis. Totally, totally. When you... You know, hypnosis used to be hip. It did. It changed a lot. Back in my day. Yep. Those were hypnosis. Exactly. Back in the day, it was why it was like a you had the twirly mustache guy. Yep. Yep. And a watch with and the, a pocket watch. Yeah, with the the spectacles. He mm-hmm. had spectacles, and he would twirl or uh, you know do like a metronome thing. Yeah. With the watch. A, occasionally, there was that like your black eyes, and white Beetlejuice swirly yep. thing that went around. Yep. Yeah. And your eyes started doing the little swirly thing, like mm-hmm. the hypnotoad thing. Yep. I've read stories where people were put under hypnosis to have surgery performed. There was That's a, bad. There was a Scrubs episode. <laughs> there was a Scrubs episode that dealt with that, where where the black dude, like that was this patient requested that he do that and he's so he's whispering or he he's the surgeon he's having her hypnotist whisper in her ear rather than giving her a- actual anesthetic oh. and i believe the episode ends really badly yeah where sure. she just screams and pretty much ruins the well entire i operation. want you to know that tv's not real <laughs> No, no, Scrubs is real. Mm-hmm. Scrubs actually is a real show. Yeah. That's for a different episode of the Illuminati, but... Uh, <laughs> no, no, those can... people actually exist. Is it a real show? Yeah, Turk and JD yes. are real people, and they are in a hospital. I would not trust that. that. Give me the medicines uh, to knock me out. I do not want surgery under hypnosis. Like, there's a few things I would do under hypnosis, and not that's not one of them. There's... No, I agree. Yeah. Knowing about it, I... But I'm not very suggestible. That's what I've learned. I'm not very... The term is suggestible. I'm so if you've ever been to one of those hypnosis shows mm-hmm. where they start to put you under, what they're doing is they're scanning the audience to see who's suggestible. And you can physically see those people, ah. their, their heads start to bob, like their heads get very heavy and downward. Sometimes people will fall off their chairs, just kind of like slink down, like they lose the ability to sit in the seat. See, I've always questioned that. I always feel like, because I've been to a few of those, and I mean, it seems really cool, but I always wonder if those people weren't just pre-selected to pretend like they're... Oh, totally, totally, yeah. You've got, if you're a good hypnotist and you're marketing yourself properly, you're probably not getting that much business, because who, (laughs) you know what I mean, really? So you're you're filling it up with with trickery, and it sounds like those... Bamboozles. Bamboozlements, yes, Ah. you know? Yes, and most of them work in advertising and... The good, a lot of them, yeah. The, the good, good guys ones, or the bad guys? Yeah, half and half. And a lot of the uh, bad guys work above that and into propaganda campaigns. Um, for, I'm a good guy. Uh, yeah. That's part of what I do <clears throat> is I help people figure out that they're being manipulated and how to handle that. So they don't even know. It's like the Matrix. Like They don't know yes. that they're being manipulated until you unplug them. Well, some yep. people, you know. can feel it. You can feel it. You just can't figure it out. That's what manipulation is. Is. I think you're manipulating me. I feel the urge to give you money right now, and I don't know why. I will take your money. I know you will. Trust that feeling. I'm doubting you're that good person now. <laughs> Every time you're around me, it's okay to trust that feeling, well, Brandon. Uh, so he has, he, has a, <laughs> he has actually a tip I could give people who would... Uh, who are who are maybe thinking like, oh, is this... Are they trying to manipulate me? Sure. I, I, 
Every commercial you're watching, they're manipulating you in some way. They are attempting to elicit emotional response based on visuals. Visual hypnosis exists. So does audio hypnosis. There's multiple ways to do it. The combination of words and images, yes, can put you in a minor... And we're not talking about you going into a trance while you're watching commercials. Remember the last time you were watching a commercial and your mind kind of just stopped and phased out for a split second and you were kind of watching the commercial but kind of not and sometimes the words seem to just creep by you but you would pause for a second and and focus in on them only and when i'm on really good mushrooms okay okay well it's this half phase right there where you're not really watching the commercial but you are you've kind of phased out that right there is a bit of a hypnotic state because you're not really paying attention so all that stuff being spoken on the screen is kind of getting through that first consciousness barrier and you're hearing it but you're not really listening to it so yeah, they use they use stuff like that. I used hypnotic pattern language in that sentence. Specifically commands. You can work in commands to make them sound like questions. Like when you just stop and listen for a moment. What what am I, I do you hear that little pause between stop and listen? When you normally say that sentence, you're like, when you just stop and listen for a moment. But if I say to you in a cool voice, when you just stop and listen for a moment, listen, there's a subtle difference, and this is actually what they teach in NLP. This is what Tony Robbins does. You can recognize these subtle commands worded into regular language. When you listen to a, a guided meditation, they're always saying, and focus on your breath for a second, and you feel it going in and out. And right there, you're now they're having you think about the thing that's happening. They're listening to you. They're obeying you. When I tell you to think about your breathing and how you're doing, you can't not think about your breathing, and you just obeyed I'm me. I'm refusing that. You just obeyed me, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're telling somebody something, their mind is just going to follow you. It's not like they're, I'm not going to think about red apples right now. Well, nope. uh, you, uh, sorry, nope. I made you think about red apples. That's part of it. No, so. You you are 100% always being manipulated. Now, if I could just manipulate people to give more to the Patreon, that would be amazing. <laughs> when you stop and think about donating to our Patreon, you <laughs> want to give your money. Focus on your breathing <laughs> and then the money While flowing from your, from wallet, your wallet into the Patreon. Our page. second and third tier on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's people that use this to... There's there's a group of... Like, I've heard about this. There's like a subculture of sleazy guys that use this as like a, a way to get laid. Like, they use this NLP... As a means of picking up women. Yes. There's like the pick yeah. up. What, I don't know what the book's yeah. called, but it's like this if pick up If by sleazy thing, guys, right? you mean me when I was 19, 20, two, I mean between you 19 of, and 23? I mean you as of 20 minutes ago. No. <laughs> and also you in my work. You were trying to neg me coming in here. <laughs> no, and also in my work, I deprogram. Like I help with the self-esteem damage after getting done with the pickup artist. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> so you 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 handle the aftermath of some, some girl who was persuaded into this sleazy dude's bed. Yes, and I help people figure out what the <laughs> she comes to you like the, I don't know what happened. The I just positives was that they learned from it. Had his penis in no, it. the positives that they learned from it, and then also whatever was just really jacked up. Because yeah, it, like if it like can if be this, used very darkly. Totally. Like it if can. I pick up artist stuff, they just utilize a little bit of uh and I know because I actually downloaded the courses when I was a kid. Yes, I <laughs> because no, no, I'm serious. This is how I first learned about NLP was it was like this this nerdy looking guy named Ross Jeffries. This was his name. <laughs> he sounds cool. He's a he sleazy, he looks like Egon from Ghostbusters, and he's making Hundreds of thousands of dollars teaching men how to just basically approach women. It has you go through like guided meditations of you approaching a woman and feeling powerful and feeling confident. And it was basic confidence with the sole intent of getting laid. It had that aspect to it, which, hey, most guys who weren't getting laid are like, well, this could get me laid. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, I got to do a course and I can read the tapes. And you sit there in the corner and you imagine yourself being powerful and walk into a room and he does this crazy voice. And it's like, it's like Tony Robbins. If Tony Robbins helped you get laid, that's what those pickup artists were doing. But it's a combination of all of it. But it was like it was like not just b feeling like a confident person. It was actually performing mind tricks on the women you're talking to, like pretending like you're saying something negative so they really want your attention. And sure, but that's not it, hypnosis. And that's you, like, a, these cues to like. That's, that's not hypnosis. That's a communication tactic. But that's a form of NLP, which is kind yes. of hypnosis. Uh, one of the aspects it's, of NLP it's, it's is programming to your brain. Yes. It's like creating a macro. Like well, control I mean, R means take off your clothes. Nikki knows a bit about NLP. <laughs> I do. Is that why you're together? Did he NLP you? <laughs> <laughs> he NLP'd you hard, didn't he? <laughs> it stands for uh, Naples uh, Linguini Pasta. I made a Naples Linguini Pasta. <laughs> Naked 
premarital. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. Th- I don't think Chris used any juju. Well, that's how part no. of it, though. If no. you thought he did it, then it wouldn't work. He's yes. just super good at it. He's like an NLP samurai. Yeah. He totally yeah. like katanaed your inhibitions. Yeah. And now no, you I find did, yourself here not, without any real idea of how you got no, here. No, I did not right hypnotize <laughs> Nadine when <laughs> I met Nadine. But what, what? I did do was, re- was read. I read Nadine's facial expressions and her body language. Mm-hmm. And I carefully... Implanted suggestions. Yes, yes. I carefully flirted with her at periodic moments throughout the night and tried to tie those together. I absolutely mm-hmm. tried to create like a little anchor. Mm-hmm. Your anchor is something you do in NLP. I totally created one of those. I did this little rubbing thing on her arm that oh, I, yeah. you know, no, 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 and I you... brought it back later on. You know, <laughs> I left a, I teased her a little bit. I, you know, I, t- come on. What, I, we of course. Need, we need There's anything. a fine line between using technique to get a positive outcome in all things and like being a character of something, you know, like if you use some of that to just kind of enhance some things, but if you try to be some kind of caped woman slaying character, (laughs) it will backfire. Totally. It will completely backfire. Unless you're really, really good at it. Yeah. In which case, then you take you over the world. You have to actually be Batman at that point. And right? by With, backfire, I don't I mean think... you won't get laid. I mean, at some point, like a lot of times, <laughs> what I think happens is a regular kind of good woman falls for one of those guys, and that woman is like, what are you doing right now? Why are you being weird with this stuff? <laughs> Why are you rubbing my leg and telling me to breathe? And then they oh, come yeah. see me and I have to explain. I'm like, oh, I think she just likes you. Like, you the person. Like, what are, are you doing pickup artist shit? And they're like, oh, but this stuff helped me get laid. I'm like, yes, but it might not help you have a relationship. That's totally, different. Totally. Yeah, but guys That's don't. different. Most of the I tried it for years and it, <laughs> I tried it for years and it never helped me get laid. It yeah. always just made me like, that's that weird guy that talks weird. You know? <laughs> and not because of the accent. It was because he was, I was like trying to tell bro, like stories. And we're like, listen, you're getting relaxed. Hey, you know, <laughs> remember that time when you were, you know, and you felt that first kiss and he'd be like, why is this Guido talking <laughs> all, trying to talk really romantic? I sucked at it. Remember when you were riding on a bike when you were a kid yeah. now picture me as the bike <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the girl's like get the fuck away from me yeah. go as far away from me as you can no I used to try to do handwriting analysis <laughs> you seriously remember, remember I this? remember you that remember this yeah. you told me about that you thought it was the most groundbreaking genius thing like I'm gonna have this girl write out this thing and I'm gonna tell her everything about herself yeah but I would say the same amazing. shit to all of them be like hmm I see some sexual things here <laughs> and then I look at them on your teeth I look at them and loop and you're off. telling me that did not work for you I can't buy it I can't <laughs> nope, I abandoned it at like 22. I, I tried it real. I tried it for like three years. I gave it three years. I was like 19, 22. Gave that a shot. It wasn't working. This is what makes you a smart man to me. You will try anything. Yeah, I give it. You know what it did give me? Some it, would call that foolish. I'm just, no, because he ah, quits yes. things too. Yes, I quit things when they don't. When I'm like, <laughs> this is not getting the response that I wanted. Right. Here's what it. Here's what it did give me between 19 and 22. It gave me the confidence to walk up to anybody. And be ridiculous. That's what it did give me the confidence mm-hmm. to do. And and, and the, the exercises, valuable. like the confidence building exercises, were absolutely great. And I found that, and then I, I checked out Tony Robbins for a little bit. So yeah, no, it totally, it totally was. No, it's it's true. After you've gotten rejected by telling a woman to write out something and then analyzing her hand, right? You can't really go any lower. Like you can't. Yes. There's no no worse part of that. Failing so at there. failing at being a pickup artist teaches you that it's totally okay to fail with women. That's a good. Lesson, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we should tell all our listeners, like, go out there and pr- try to be a handwriting analyst. <laughs> <laughs> tell her to breathe in front of you and see yep. where that gets All I'm you. saying is uh, NLP and some little hypnosis, it taught me, in the end, that you have to just be yourself. So, are we... Are and we that's, in- that's the lesson. you got to be yourself. Aww, I think you just named some topics for our other more serious show. I think so. Oh, <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm getting diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> What, because of the sweetness in the air? <laughs> yeah, this is getting thick. So, are we under the are we under the the consensus then that 
uh, it's a real thing that you can hypnotize people. Oh, yes. absolutely, yeah. You, can, you yes. can do this neurolinguistic program. Like, it's a legit practice. Think about all the crazy beliefs that you have. You listeners at home, however they run the, run the gamut, I'm talking religious, political, personal, social, whatever, and then imagine the messages that you've gotten. I guarantee you've been hypnotized into buying something online, into a, a, purchasing this type of insurance at some point. No, and it's been studied. They'll even measure people who have been hypnotized after surgery. They will tell the subconscious to believe lead less to work with the doctors because the body feels a cut from a scalpel like an attack wound yeah. and goes into attack mode which makes your your blood pump faster yeah, what about- to run and so when you hypnotize somebody to set to tell the body hey body basically Hey, it's body. more complicated than this <laughs> but hey body you're basically telling the, sub- the subconscious um, that um, it's about to be cut and that that's helpful and to bleed less. So part of how they've measured this is they measure rate of bleeding post-surgery and people who have been hypnotized bleed much, much less, which is really that's fascinating. That's crazy. It's like the Buddhists that can heat their bodies up and warm the yeah. blankets. I've and seen that. Are they we're really powerful the computers. Buddhists like to light themselves on fire too, so I don't know. One Buddhist did like that. to? I don't there know was, if they no, like there to. Were, there was, a, oh, was, there one, was a whole group of them. Overstretch. Yeah. Uh, they, he didn't seem like he was minding it. <laughs> so, well, that's the power of hypnosis. Think of any other person would have been like, ah! I'm on fire. But he was like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, gong. He, I will give everybody a, 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 a experiment, a an experiment you can do with putting yourself in a trance. Now, do not do this if you're driving. Don't do it at work. This is a great in bed thing to do. What you need to do is use a stereo phone. Okay, you have to have a regular, like a a newer phone, and you need to have stereo headset. So you just got to say stereo on it, left and right, no mono headsets. Go to YouTube and type in binaural beats. B I N U R I A L. Binaural, you spell it wrong, it'll come up. There's an A, there's an A in there somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, I've spelled it wrong enough, it always comes Uh up. Binaural beats. You'll see like alpha waves, delta waves, theta waves. The, The lower the wave you go, the deeper. Uh, the deeper the brain waves. So these are actually sounds, okay? Wave sounds that are played in a binaural fashion, which means they're played in the left and right ear alternatively, whoa, 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 like that, to match the brain wave that your brain actually falls into while you're sleeping or while you're in a hypnotic trance. So if you put these binaural beats on, you can play them on YouTube, they have loops, and you sit there and focus, and you just breathe, and you repeat a word over and over again, you can absolutely put yourself into a small hypnotic trance in your bed. But then what? Like, isn't the whole point once you're in a hypnotic trance, that's when you're open to suggestion and then somebody tells you to, you know, go act like a chicken and you act like a chicken. No, because right. you take a take a pre recording and have it play in the background that says, uh, you know, be a be a better person tomorrow. Be a better. You can just say that over no, and over and over again. No, for you to sleep because you don't sleep. Patreon Go page. to sleep. Go to sleep. Yes, yeah, I do do that. Actually. You're gonna fall asleep. You know the You're word. You know the asleep. word that I that I chant when I'm mm-hmm. doing that. It's ambient, <laughs> and it works every time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think hypnotic trances are real. Uh, hypnosis language is real. Be don't, careful. Don't light yourself on fire. Don't do that. Don't always be yourself. Always be yourself with uh, when in relationships. You don't need to hypnotize. Wait, anybody. I want to give a warning too. Huh? I didn't know we were giving <laughs> spontaneous warnings. Oh hell yeah! Don't pay any hypnosis people unless you really truly trust them yeah. to do work with you. What about like the stop smoking hypnosis? Does that actually work? If they're only talking about. Smoking and cigarettes very specifically and focused. Yeah, if you're healing from trauma or shitty people have hurt you in your life, don't let someone manipulate you because they know how to manipulate. You just It takes warning. Be very cautious Be about cautious. which hypnos- yeah. hypnotist yeah. you call. Because somebody yeah. could say they're going to make you stop smoking and suddenly find that they have convinced you to I'm go not talking to about house. not listening yeah. like listen no. to any podcast anything that's being broadcast but if you're gonna go in a room and shut the door with someone that's hypnotizing you and you really don't know your own level of I'm serious I've seen some people go under hypnosis who absolutely go under so deeply it it freaks me out a little bit that's why I don't advertise that I do that and I I don't go into actively doing more of that work even though I'm I'm good at it and I think it's powerful because I it's it's very 
suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> so you you could actually convince somebody that they're something else. Like, could you do that? Like, where you see in the shows that no, you say, and that you know, would go away. It's just that you're in a vulnerable state. So if I go and to try to get you know somebody to stop smoking, and all of a sudden I have the urge to take my clothes off, maybe I shouldn't have done that thing. Because Noted. I, I feel like, like yeah. make a note. You know, don't tuck that in your pocket. Like, yeah, you know, I love going. You know, go here because unless that's what you're going for, unless yes. your goal is like, I need to be more comfortable taking my clothes off. Then hell yeah, oh, take your clothes absolutely. off. All over take the your clothes off should never be in any of the hypnosis like steps. In, in step step four, four of hypnosis: <laughs> take off your clothes. Every time I want a cigarette, now I take off unless my. Unless you're working with somebody that you really trust who does some kind of sex work like that. Totally. That yes. If you go into hypnosis happens. for sex work, different story. But if you need to quit smoking, I would actually suggest uh, the easy way to quit smoking by Alan Carr. Just a shout out total. I'm not getting any <laughs> dollars from that, but it helped me quit smoking. Easy way to quit by Alan Carr. Look it up. Is that a thing? Like a book? It's a book. Oh. It's a book. Yeah. You can't hypnotize you in a book. Well. No, oh, maybe. Uh, if you I mean, read it, you know. We know. Of, what if they right. have like a sub, like, little invisible link? There's yeah. Yeah. What, one, one word or two words. It's a slightly different color. They've done that in books. And they say that the movement of the eye mm-hmm. over the page to read back and forth and back like and forth watch. in oh, that we're rhythmic on, we're on yep. something. motion. That's, That's part of why we drift off to sleep when it's we read rhythmic. that way. So every book is actually a hypno- hypnotic technique. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. Just pay attention because it happens yeah. when you're yeah. watching television. Every be commercial mindful. is trying to do something to you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, be cautious about uh, hypnosis. <laughs> <laughs> Warning from go. the show. Well, so let's get back to this fire. That seems like the interesting part of that thing you just said mm. that we decided to talk about chipmunks. Okay, instead. so we went with, with a couple of our friends who will remain. We won't name them. We won't. But they came and they they brought their kid. Which rule number one: don't bring a kid on a hike. That's tw- it's going to be at least what would we do? Fourteen miles. Yeah, <laughs> fourteen miles with what, forty pound packs on. We started with. We're hiking. We're hiking. We're hiking. Day one. It's getting like long. It took us. We got there late. We didn't start early enough. It was already like 2 o'clock. We're walking down the forest, and the person ahead of me who we're hiking with says, Oh, it smells like uh, somebody's camping or cooking. And I'm like, Whoa, it does. It smells like a campfire. And I see a little bit of smoke. But this is on the trail. Now, when you're backpacking, you can you have to camp at least a mile. Not a mile, but at least 100 feet off the trail. That's the rule for where you can make a camp. And we're walking down the thing, and... I mean, me and me and you, Breno, we used to, we've, we've camped before, so you know proper camping. Like, people from Colorado know proper camping, where to put a campfire, where not to put a campfire. Right, We're just walking along the trail. On fire. Yeah, and we see just smoke coming from this tiny little ti- little hill. Like, maybe the hill is five feet in front of us, just a little walk up. Me and a couple other people walk up the hill, and we notice, holy crap, this whole area, 10 square feet, 10 to 20 square feet was on fire. Not on fire flames, but on fire like burning embers, like hot, like this little campfire. Flames were starting. They were starting to lap up. Yeah, a little bit. Small trees. Up a tree. It was scary. Yeah. So we came on this fire and we like dropped our packs and started trying to put it out. Crazy occurrence. The people we were hiking with just happened to get like cell phone service within a quarter mile of where we were on this mountain. And we put it out. We started putting it out. We called. Uh, they called nine one one. They hooked us to the forest service. Hooked us to somebody else. And they were like, "Where are you on the trail?" We gave them literal GPS coordinates, and we stayed there for three hours, stomping this thing out, grabbing mud and dirt from wherever we could find, and putting cold mud and dirt on the fire. Well, now everybody in Colorado knows how you put out a, a campfire. Yeah. It's a no, it wasn't fire about or... putting it out. It was they built it on top of. Foot upon foot upon foot upon foot of dry needles. So did this start out as like a campfire that just got out of control? Yeah, because there were um, rocks. Like they tried to make the little rock wall of the fire like you do. But they they did it on top of pine needles. No joke. It was ridiculous. Morons. They were just retarded people. Idiots. Yes. Yes. This is like what moron 
put a campfire here. And then That's they just put was. more kindling. It looked to me like they put a pile of the same super flammable shit. To try to smother it. Couldn't see it anymore. Yeah. And we're like, oh, it's out. And then it like underburnt and was all smoldering and burning. So we really couldn't put it fully out. Well, the, the, the Colorado way to put out a fire is you pee on it. Like that's how we did pee on it. We that. peed on we it eventually. All peed on it. We no, all imagine took turns it. peeing on it before we left it. Think about it like this. So, uh, in an ideal see, world, <laughs> you can just see eight of you lined up in a line, like like a fire, you know, fireman holding the yeah. hoses, like advancing <laughs> towards it. You guys are all just, just urinating and, and walking instead. It was too big of a spot to urinate. You're supposed to urinate on the campfire. So, anyone who's camped before, here are a few rules. This is for anybody who's going to go camping. Number one, you only put a fire pit in a place that already has an established fire pit. Okay. Number one. You never, ever, ever put a fire pit around other leaves. Like, the area needs to be stomped down and clear. Rule number two. Rule number three. There cannot be trees within 10 feet, 20 feet of your fire pit. You can't build a fire pit under trees because the fire goes up and lights the trees and the bar and everything else the on branches, fire. The branches. The branches, the whole nine. cannot stick out. Yeah. Do you understand this, people visiting Colorado? People vis- yeah, seriously. Like, it feels, here's what we thought happened. As we were showing up at this place, this couple was coming out and they were complaining like, oh yeah, you know, our water filter broke or this thing broke. They looked like they were from out of town. I think they liked this place in Texas or something. We think... They couldn't make the hike, got too tired, made a a, a, a a makeshift fire right off the trail, had no idea what they were doing, started a forest fire, and then walked off. Like, they took their fire pit, just, like, they put, like, a cup of dirt on it, and then walked away. And over the next four hours, it just spread from the campfire and ate all the pine needles on it. It's like... Why would you build a campfire in the middle of dry pine needles? And it just started to spread like lava and started to light a little root on fire. And dude, it was like if we hadn't showed up, it all would have it all would have gone up. So you witnessed like the the origins of like those giant forest fires you hear about, you know, in California and all those places. They're all started by some idiot who just doesn't understand fire apparently well yeah and there's a limited amount of resources to come address that so when we called we expected like helicopter to come like right away <laughs> drop in like the orange yeah. shit from an airplane <laughs> they're like sorry y'all we're not gonna be able to get there till tomorrow morning because we're dealing with other fires in the state and it was just like one dude he had like a, a little squirt gun well and we had been like... walking for hours so it's not like you just pull into a parking lot and and pull up and it's not like a home fire in a suburban neighborhood where you just the firemen just spray it on a hose. No, you're miles into the wilderness. Yeah, they're like, oh, there's a fire. They we'll, have to we'll, get to you. We'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to walk. They told us there. to contain it and then walk away. Yeah, it, it was a really weird experience. And we kept going. Yeah, it was really weird because I wanted to go the other. I wanted to go this way on the on the loop on the loop, and everyone was like, wait, but that's not the normal way to go on the loop. I went the backwards way because something felt right about going that way, and we ran into this forest. So I ended up like making sure it didn't spread and calling the right people at the right time. That's, it felt like a miracle. Crazy. Like normally, we kind of rush. We want to get there as early as possible to get there to get started. And this day, we all just had a very yeah. Whenever we get there, we so, didn't start till the afternoon. So and yeah, just it just felt it together. Was, we got service seconds before smelling the fire. Or we wouldn't have been able to... We couldn't call. Somebody lost a phone right when we started. Mm-hmm. We didn't have service to try to even call the lost phone right where we when we pulled into the park and the first parking lot. So the fact that we had service miles in... Was just crazy. It just came together. So that's that's officially adventuring. We mm-hmm. need a new. We need a better term that than adventuring because this actually saved like something. We should yeah. call it something like intuitioning, miracling, or <laughs> firing. Oh, that's already a thing. Adventure curling, adventure, adventure, miracle, miracle. No, adventures. no, 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 Mira no, adventure. no, no, no. Divining. No, I don't know. But that sounds like something that should happen. We need a somebody needs to come up with a word for that. Yes, give us. So we'll when you're on an adventure and you prevent catastrophic disaster at risk to life and limb. Yes, it's already. It's what al- is that called? You've gone beyond camping. You've gone yeah. beyond hiking. Okay, you've gone beyond. You, you started hiking, then you decided to camp somewhere. Yep. Okay, boom! You just became a backpacker. Yep. Boom! Now you're backpacking. You're doing something dangerous and or extreme at all. Ooh, now it's an adventure. Fine. Now it's an adventure. Uh, but but you you're potentially saving lives. Uh, what that's is that? Her, that's heroic. Now you're. He- Heroing, heroing, hero adventure, Hero-ing. adventuring, heroticing. <laughs> you engaged in heroticica. Heroticism. <laughs> you had a heroic adventure. Yeah. 
I don't know. It, it, it involves water, like, water sports. That's a different. It involves water sports and that's a different and vacation. Fire. It does. That's like if other sh- crap happened in the woods with the firefighters the next day. And you were with that's a group. Like, yes. There was there was there was all kinds of bodily fluids uh, emanating. I think you you guys are her- erotic, erotic. Ah, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna put it on this sh- this number two choice right now. <laughs> oh, number one choice is completely still open for this. <laughs> no, no. If there's no number one choice, then this has to be the number one choice. We're not committing to erotic. Or does it? You you. you <laughs> just heroticated heroic <laughs> I guess we did so way to heroticate we all appreciate that time for questionable answers this is where you the listeners uh, ask us a question this week Rachel writes in from Wisconsin uh, Rachel writes in should I have more bacon now, now the the knee jerk response to this is obviously yes. Everyone's going to go with yes. Yeah, I mean, who's not? Except for those like vegans, they don't count. So we know yes is probable, but let's we need to like break down like the question, the essence. We of have the no context for where the baconing is occurring. Well, well we do. She's from Wisconsin, so, which is the land of cheese. Exactly. So we are we are able to infer that there's probably cheese involved. Is this a trick? No, 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 I don't think it is. I think is we Rachel to, we trying to, to trick? We need to Sherlock this thing. We okay. need to really kind of delve into it now. Is, wait, is there a bacon commission of Wisconsin or in general? I'm sure there's a bacon. Oh committee. yeah, there's big bacon. I yeah. mean, that, <laughs> yes. they create all the bacon. Big bacon. <laughs> of yeah. course, big, everybody knows big bacon. Big bacon. They they're the ones that supply all the pigs to like the yeah. the slaughterhouses. Don't want to double cross big bacon. No, yeah, big and, yeah. So and that's Rachel just Rachel left on its own no right last there. name. No last name. Okay. She might be running, fleeing. She might be in witness protection from Big Bacon. That's true. But but she still wants to eat bacon. So Big Bacon should... Maybe she works for Big Bacon. Okay, Rachel, if you're being held captive by Big Bacon, we need you to Morse code us <laughs> your locations. Send us your message in cheese. Yes. Maybe a giant cheese roll. If uh-huh. you just roll it down a hill uh-huh. to us, we'll eat it. And... I'll accept messages in bacon, too. If she has access to bacon... Oh. She could hide the cheese in the bacon. Or she the could bacon do that. in the cheese. Okay, but should she have more? I think that's the essential question yeah, here. That's I'm what we're trying to answer. Gonna go with um, maybe. Well, maybe <laughs> she can't really do anything with less bacon. Well, it's inferring that she's had some bacon. Because more. You yes. can't have more of something that you haven't had. Alice in Wonderland. Correct. That. Correct. Yes. So she's had bacon already. But had in what sense? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna infer that she's consumed it orally, as is the tradition of eating bacon. That's Should I have more bacon? She's she doesn't say anything other than that. Should I have more bacon? She's maybe established she's just trying she to acquire bacon. bacon. Maybe, maybe she just has this bacon empire. To a cop. <laughs> maybe oh. she is. <laughs> so she's talking about having him in a in an erotic manner. It, yes, yes, possibly. I can't, possibly. I can't opine on whether she should I, do that. She's yeah. probably a hero. I don't know. I've never heard anybody use bacon in that sense. I don't. I. I. You haven't no. really. Oh yeah, that's a that's a common thing. Give me your bacon. No. Well, no. I mean, if you're I, dating a cop, then obviously, I mean, that's a common thing a, you'd say to the cop. Yeah. I think you'd upset the cop. Well, I don't yeah, think any but maybe cop they likes have to be referred to as bacon. Well, maybe it's one of those abusive relationships. Maybe she treats him poorly. Oh, maybe it's usually she's, the other way around. Maybe it's she's usually... trying to demean him. And that's why she calls him bacon. And now she's asking if she should continue to demean him in that. Wow, I bet that's way. a really well-adjusted cop. I'm, I'm sure he's, he's <laughs> one of the cop. He's the cop that'll pull you over for going two miles over the speed limit and then beat the shit out of you, curse at you, yeah, yeah because, because his wife is calling him, "Hey, bacon!" Exactly. all day when he gets home. Should I have more of you? I don't know. I'm going to ask a weird radio show, <laughs> yes. and they're going to shame you on air. <laughs> You're the worst cop in Wisconsin, yeah. Joe. <laughs> so in this case, I'm going to go with no. No, Rachel should not. Have more bacon. If by bacon she means sexual encounters with a poor, overly abusive cop, then no, she then no, have you should that. not. Exactly. But if by bacon you mean the crispy deliciousness, yeah, actual fried pig. Yes, I mean pork bellies. Essentially, fried pork bellies. Yeah, why wouldn't sliced wh- fried pork bellies? What's Delicious the argument fat. against having more bacon? Unless you're literally like in the hospital having open heart surgery at the time that you're considering eating more bacon. If a doctor said to you, "Look, if you have one more piece of bacon, you're going to die." Right. Don't I'm, eat another piece of I'm bacon. I'm bypassing most of your arteries as we speak. No, yes. you shouldn't be eating bacon while I do this. Totally. Probably you shouldn't eat. You know what? I say I roll the dice, Rachel. Yeah, fuck it. Have bacon. Roll Have- the bacon. Bacon. 
And welcome back to The Green Chef on this week's, well, what is The Green Chef? The Green Chef is uh, late night, um, uh, if you got the munchies, late night uh, recipes from us to you. Stuff I want to eat. Eat, yeah. Uh, this week, Vagabond Stew. And you just checked an item off your bucket list. I did. I mean, it doesn't sound good. No, uh, no. And Vagabond Stew sounds like a guy that you throw out of the party. It's like, oh, is that it's stew? It's <laughs> Vagabond Stew. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, he's no, like that token character that kind of bounces from place to no, place. Who invited Stuart? It sounds like what a homeless guy, serial killer, would eat. Well, it's homeless. It was yeah. invented, Vagabond but it's still a person. Yes, serial killer. Eats, yeah, it eats was stew. Like, do you think the hepatitis <laughs> cooks out? Listen, I'm going to tell you, it's not great. It's this is <laughs> what probably <the> <laughs> you're telling us. <laughs> Look, I want to tell you right now, this is not a good, this is not a great recipe, you guys. This is what like, the hell? <laughs> you're not supposed to say that. No, they're not all winners. You're they're not, not all sell- winners. You're not selling they're this They're not thing. all winners. Wow. Okay. 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 Here's why. Here's I am why. mildly intrigued now. <laughs> I, I kind of want to know what it is and more than I would have. you fed have. this to me? Yes. Like, what? Yes. Okay. Well, then you can give me your opinion on whether it was great or not. Wait. Vagamon stew can only be made while you're backpacking. But so if you've had, I seem, I feel like if you're at the point where you're eating this, that would qualify your backpacking into an adventure. Yes. This because is because like, now you're eating this life threatening thing. It's that not. Could no, kill the you. thing isn't life threatening. Uh, I. <laughs> it's just. I, I'm going to leave yeah. my reservations on so, that. So. Vagabond stew occurs when you are in the middle of the woods and you just hiked four or five uh, hours. And you're exhausted, and you're taking what little food left you have in your pack and mixing it with filtered lake water and boiling Whoa. up stew on your backpacking trip. Mm-hmm. This sounds like it could be called Giardia stew. No, no, it's filtered lake water. You cannot use lake water unless you filter it and or boil it. We did both. Yeah, well, we lived on lake water for we lived three on, days. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do adventuring and backpacking. But why would you not just have regular water? Because you can't you drank carry it all. all the water that you need well, for Well, then you days. didn't plan properly no, for a you no, five-hour no. hike. I, this is what we learned learning how to backpack. No. You actually... Uh, no, no, because it's a backpacking trip. This is day one. You will drink. You're all... eating this on day one or day two. So or you day ran three. out of water on the first day. No, you don't ever yeah. run out of water. You just said you ran out of water. No, you know, all you... the water that you show up with. That you show up with. Then you find more water while you're backpacking. But, but That's what if, how you do it? What if there's no source of water? Where then you, you die. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> yes. then you shouldn't be backpacking. Like you only backpack to a water source. Yes, you plan. Oh, water plan. source too. So here's why: uh, water is extremely heavy. You can. He, I carried three liters of water on my back and another uh, like two pints in a in a in a container, and that right there was probably like six or seven pounds, whatever pounds, however many pounds water is. So so be stronger. You can only carry so much. No, no, you you can't literally physically can't carry that much. You can't carry three days worth of water with you. I can. So you have to. Okay. No, you can't. I carried a third of my body weight. You can't carry much more than that. And I me and Nadine have I gotten can. all like, yeah, we challenge you to carry water, bro. I carried it all the way into my car. You were about to not even walk with us in our walkable neighborhood to go get a burger <laughs> later. You were going to get in your car. That is yeah. correct. Yes. Totally. You know why? Because my car has its own water source, uh-huh. and I don't have to eat Vagamon Stewart. That's right. Vagamon <laughs> Stewart's amazing. So when we made Vagamon Stewart, we got lake water, okay? Yes. And we mm. filtered it. And then we boiled the lake water to kill mm-hmm. anything else in it. And to the boiling lake water, you open up your bear-proof container. Uh-huh. Of and course. And you pull out... Your dried beans. You pull out your dried vegetables. You pull out a packet of soy sauce. You pull out a packet of dried miso soup. You pull out a couple of dried dehydrated mushrooms. And you pull out some (laughs) beef jerky. And you chop up the beef jerky. And you hope it is the right beef jerky flavor to match the miso and the other dried stuff and the lake water. And you put all that in a uh, in a bowl. And you cook it up for 10 minutes. And you try not to die. So I have questions okay. on this. This sounds like what you would eat if you were on the set of Full Metal Jacket. Sure. And you were getting bombs blown up all around you. And your friends were dying because you're... A different nationality than another people. I don't think you stop and cook a meal. Yeah, during not the t- no, no. I'm not saying happening. exactly at that moment, but I'm saying during that like trip that is where you would eat this particular culinary delight. This is even oh, this yeah. is a lot of food for people on the front lines. They have MREs. They have like meals. They have a right. like a, but that's like what a tuna it, can. That's exactly. They're no, like they all... have their like beef jerky dried uh-huh. MRE and they have their miso soup dried MRE. I don't know if that's they what might MRE make it together. Is. I know. I th- no, I'm we're sure. Sicilians. We had like dried. 
With porcini mushrooms? Yeah, we did. It was dried porcinis, <laughs> organic carrots and peas and spinach. And so, onions and red, red bell pepper. Red bell pepper. Yeah, we had actually like awesome dehydrated food. So and, it's either, either yeah. you die of starvation, you kill a bear, or yeah. you eat this. Yep. That's yeah. pretty much three choices. Vagabond stew, and the reason it's vagabond stew is because you're it's traveler stew. A vagabond is somebody without a with, not really homeless, but somebody that travels from place to place. So as a backpacker who's got to find their own water source, or who has to carry all their food, yeah. who's not hunting, this is what you got to do to survive. So this is on our recipes for late night snacks for people. Yes, if you're in the woods it, <laughs> and happen to have you know internet service and uh-huh. an ability to listen to a podcast. Yeah, so you, you but yet remember. no food or water. Or yeah, and don't ever drink lake water if you're out there. Don't pull that. That stupid Bear Gryllis stuff. Don't watch that show, Bear Gryllis, Man vs. Wild. He's going to get you killed. Don't listen to him. He's listen. like the anti Boy Scout. You have to filter and boil your water if you're going to find water sources out in the wild. As long as you do that, you won't die. You're fine. You won't get your audio. You won't be poisoning yourself. But if you just drink river water and lake water, you're going to get a dysentery or diarrhea, and it's going to be a really bad time. And I know that people are listening to us while they're out in the middle of the woods. Of do course. you know? Cooking. Yeah. I do. I want somebody to write in and tell me. That you can't. Oh, of course. Half of our listeners have probably gone camping. I, yeah. I'm going sure. to question that statistic there. Uh, third. I'm An still eighth. A, most. A, a sixteenth. One guy. 80%. Five. There's one dude in a, a beard that's in an RV that's five of them ranting about the government blowing people that guy's up. pretty awesome he's probably the only one eating this thing he is I want somebody to, whoever has the balls to try this to let us know that they've tried it I just, would love we to have, hear it's a delicious. review just yeah go to the uh, go to the dehydrated uh, food section oh so it is delicious see I was saying it's not going to be that great but you I'm, know I'm was... still saying it's not you're using <laughs> twice boiled river crap water that you failed to plan for and dried <laughs> Porcini, whatever the hell's that you're pulling out. You know out what? Of hold packages. on, hold on. Here's what Brando is suffering from. Brando is suffering from uh, the desire to eat good no, no, food. No, 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 uh, McDonald's uh, non, vacation? no. McDonald's vacation? Yeah, non humble hiker. Thing. McDonald's vacation. That's not a thing. Uh huh. Yep. No. When I, 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 when I go camping, I make sure that I have marshmallows. I'm going to come up with a term for you people. It's called bumbling backpacker. It's the backpacker that hasn't that thinks backpacking is easy, <laughs> yes. and thinks that they can carry uh, ninety pounds of water on their back, but then shows up, makes it a mile, and then wants to turn back. You're I, a bumbling backpacker, no, and I've seen I, it happen to tw- like ten I people. I am a proactive packer because I will only camp places where right. I can bring my water three feet from my car. All right, there you go, and cook marshmallows. All right, you will never adventure then. I don't need to adventure. This this <laughs> this being in life Neil is kind of yeah, an adventure. This is an adventure in and of itself. Right. I don't need to create false adventures out of my food. I'm saying I'm going to die with this. Somebody's going to die. Vagabond stew everybody. <laughs> mm Yep. Thank you for listening to Atomic Rumpus. Don't forget, the show is listener-supported. When you support the show, you'll get bonus and behind-the-scenes episodes and more. Head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Atomic Rumpus. Have a great week, everybody, and happy smoking. Happy smoking.